Is there anything more frustrating than spending night after night waiting for a mare to fall? Since I really like to sleep and I am not a night owl, I quickly figured out which falling signs were really worth paying attention to. And so, in the last 15 years or so, I can count on two hands the number of night I wasted on fall watch. If you give me 15 minutes, I will review for you the 16 most mentioned signs of falling, and I will rank them from worthless to worth losing sleepover. And I'll base it on only two criteria. Is it consistent from mare to mare? And does it actually shorten the time I spend on full watch? And if you know anything about me, you know I will tell you why. So let's see if I can save you some full watch time. The first one to throw out the window is this idea of a due date. Horses don't have due date. It is frustrating, but it is reality. On average, mares will fall at around day 340. That's the average. But anything after 310 days and before 400 days is considered normal. So I wanted to get that one out of the way early. Don't park yourself watching your mare just because she's at the magical 340 days. There are some variation, even within the same mare from falling to falling although they do tend to have kind of a pattern. So I will put that one down in worthless. One we see a lot mentioned is whether her belly has dropped or not. Mares will not show a drop belly consistently. It will depend on how many foals they had and how the foal is lying in their belly. It is true that as the foaling approaches, the foal will move and adjust its position to get ready for birth. I made a whole video about how a foal prepares for birth. The link is up there if you want to know more. But that movement, that adjustment, can happen a week or two before birth or within hours. So just because your mare now has a pointed belly doesn't mean you can expect the birth in the next few days necessarily. It doesn't really narrow down the window that much, so I'll put it down to interesting. Another physical sign mentioned is when your mare has been bulging for a week and suddenly looks slab-sided. Well, just like the pointed belly one, it's not that telling and for the same reason. It means the foal has moved, yes, but it could still be days before she falls, so it's not something I personally use to narrow down my watch window. While this one looks like such a simple sign that makes so much sense to think about it, it's, you know, not that telling. It, that's the one about the tail being relaxed and losing tone. Remember, I'm looking for signs that are consistent and that narrows down the timing. So while tail will relax closer to falling, it is that vague. One mare in particular that I had who had easy birth made me work for it every time I wrapped her tail. I knew she was going to fall soon, based on other signs, but her tail stayed resolutely strong and she liked to clamp it down. Science tells us that the relaxin, the hormone that makes tendon relax prior to birth, is generally secreted a few hours before birth. But I don't think lifting the tail is a very good test for this. This next one is based on kind of the same idea and therefore not super consistent either, but the idea is that as labor approaches, the whole back end of the mare gets soft and loses tone. And yes, your mare, if your mare is relaxed, you will notice that her vulva gets longer and kind of soft, but it can really depend on the mare. And so because it's not consistent and that softening can happen hours or day before birth, I don't find it very useful to narrow down that falling window. So for that reason, I'll put it down under interesting, but not really valuable. However, while you are checking under the tail, the next sign I pay attention to is far more telling. If you part the lips of the vulva and check the color of the mucosa inside of it, it will tell you a great deal on how close your mare is to falling. You see, as labor approaches, there's an increase in blood flow as the mare's body gets ready and the mucosa goes from pale pink, like the color you would see on their gums, for example, to a deeper pink or red. I couldn't find a picture in my collection or on the internet, but this one where the foal is just about to poke out shows the color I'm talking about. It's pretty distinctive and I have seen it within 12 hours of labor and delivery. So when I check my mare daily and I see this, I know I'll be staying up that night. That one for sure makes it to the top of my list. By the way, if you find this information useful, could you take a second to hit the like button? This really helps YouTube understand who gets value from my videos and that way it can spread to more people like you. Also, if you think somebody else might benefit from this information, you can share it with them by using the share button down below. Thank you. If you're expecting a full, maybe you want to get a full book to go with it. The link is down in the description. The next sign is one you should definitely pay attention to. If I see a mare in late stage of pregnancy starting to add very uncomfortable and pawing, 
I will not leave her side, no matter what the other signs tell me. It could be a sign of early stage of labor. Now, some of them will have what we call false labor, meaning she will act very uncomfortable for a few hours, but nothing will progress, and then it will stop, and she will return to normal. Colic is always a possibility, so I will watch that mare until a few hours have passed without further sign of pain or discomfort. If labor progressed, then you have the birth to manage with that mare at that point. So yes, I would certainly lose sleep over that one. And let's face it, some mares will not show any other sign, and then suddenly starts to labor and pop out their foal. So that is not one you can neglect ever. This next one, I think, is borrowed from cattle. The idea that mares isolate themselves more as labor approaches, I've never seen it myself. Horses are very social and herd animal, and the safety is with the herd. And I've seen a lot of footage of wild mares falling right within their family group, so that tells me that it's really not that consistent. Of course, a lot of our mares are within the foaling stall, so it's hard to tell if they want to isolate themselves. But when they're out with their group, for sure, full-term mares are big, heavy, and low on patience, and will sometimes stay away from the others just because I think they don't want to deal with the shenanigans. But to say that a mare will isolate herself enough to think that it's a sign to put yourself on full watch? No. However, this is based on my 20 years of experience. You know your mare best. And if the social butterfly is suddenly at the far end of the pasture, I would check on her and I'd bring her in. The first time your mare develops an udder, you think, wow, that's it, she must be close to falling. No, it takes time. <laughs> and when the other starts fleshing out, that's what I call it, meaning it goes from nothing to suddenly being fleshy and a little bit thicker, that usually happens weeks prior to birth. And it varies from mare to mare too. I remember my first ever mare to foal here, she'd been pasture bred, so we were not sure when she was due. And when her udder started to develop, I thought foaling was a week or two away, so I got everything ready. Well, she foaled a good two months later, and I learned my lesson. I no longer confuse a fleshy udder with a full one. I'll put that early phase of the udder development as completely worthless as a sign of imminent falling. However, if your mare has not yet passed the 280 days of gestation and her udder starts to get thicker and heavier, that could be a sign of trouble. Could mean that she's about to abort. So you need to talk to your vet if you observe this. Now, a full udder that stays full even after some turnout, that is far more telling. You see, at first the udder might fill during the night when your mare is perhaps confined or choose to stay quiet, but goes down as she moves around during the day. That means it's mostly edema, and it's not a sign she will fall. However, when the udder stays full all day, I know that the next sign is about to show up and I need to monitor things more closely. So I'll put down this full udder that stays full as one to monitor closely. The next thing that I mention is the teat filling up. You see, a big udder that goes down with exercise and that has little button pinched teeth, I monitor for change. But when the teats are full, conical, and pushed out, I know that the udder is now likely in full milk production and that the fill no, sorry, and that the milk conduits are starting to fill out within it. Now, if the udder is full, tight, warm, and the teeth look like that, I watch the mare very closely indeed. It's usually combined with some secretion. I will talk about them a little bit later, but some of them can be quite telling. So this one makes it to the top of my list of useful signs that narrows down my full watch window. For a long time, I thought wax was linked with the onset of the foaling, but no, some mare will wax, some won't. Some will wax for days, and others will wax for a few hours. Wax is not enough on its own now to make me lose sleep over it, but I will monitor it closely. I wanna see how it's progressing and to see if it evolves into streaming milk, which that is a very sign, that's a sign that she's very close if she's streaming milk. Now a common confusion is to mistake a bit of secretion for real wax. Wax is quite distinctive. It grows on the teats, it drops and then reforms. It's very sticky and usually it forms in gobs. So like I said, once I see it on my mare, I will monitor her progress, but I don't necessarily lose sleep over it yet. As the udder starts to develop, the glands will start to produce a liquid. At first, it's clear, yellow, and transparent, and it has various levels of stickiness. Sometimes that initial production will push out little plugs from the milk duct. That's not wax. 
And it's not milk getting expressed either. Overall, the appearance of that liquid is something that I observe, but I certainly don't start losing sleep over this, since it can happen days before the birth. I would put that down to next to useless. Clear liquid is not milk. It's not milk unless it's getting whitish. It will change from clear and yellow to almost the consistency of skim milk, and then to full, like homo milk. That progress is very telling. Like, for example, in the morning, if she has amber liquid, and at lunch it has, she has skim milk, and by evening it's now real milk, and she's probably folding that very night. However, if she has skim milk for a day or two, and then it gets more opaque, then goes back to skim milk, she's progressing very slowly, and that's when I will pull out the testing strips. So on its own, the milk turning white and opaque is something I monitor very closely. The composition of the secretion changes as birth approach. That is why we test with those little strips. I use the simple pH ones, but you can also get some that are testing calcium. Unsurprisingly, real milk has actual calcium concentration above a certain level. The pH also drops at first, so if you have a pH of below 6.3 and the calcium is shooting up, what you have is a mare getting ready to produce or already producing colostrum milk. When that happens, I am on full watch for sure. Okay, I said earlier that I would tell you about a common mistake people make, and here it is. People test mammary secretion too early. They start as soon as the mare starts to produce something, that yellow clear liquid we just talked about. Well, it can be yellowish watery secretion for weeks before she makes actual milk. If that's what you're testing, that pH value is not going to tell you much. I hear people every year wondering why their mare has milk, low pH, but hasn't foaled yet. And often what they're testing is not actual milk and so the pH value is next to worthless. However, if your mare has placentitis, if she's been diagnosed with placentitis and you're watching her for foaling sign, pH and a calcium reading in her milk will not help you narrow down that window, unfortunately. She can basically foal anytime. All right, this one I have found to be quite consistent, easy to tell, and generally happens close to the foaling day. That is when the mare seeks relief from the pressure she's feeling by leaning her butt on a wall, on a fence, on a tree, pretty much anything she can find. She's not so much scratching her butt as just pressing it against something. Even if she acts normally in between those moments, I see this as a sign that she's getting very close and might just be waiting for nightfall or quiet time to start falling. So it's definitely a sign I pay very close attention to. Like I alluded to earlier, what is far more telling than individual sign is the collection of it and the progression you see as your mare is getting closer. I've had mare move through that overall progression in a few days and others did it over a week or two. The foal determine when it can be born, but the mare has some control over the timing of it. They generally want to foal at the time when they are comfortable. It means different things for different mare, and that can make a difference of a few days. Your mare can show all the signs to be ready really close to foaling, but if she's moved that day to a foaling stall or away from her friend, or her routine changes, then that might delay the birth. That is why if you like your sleep, like me, it's important and helpful to prepare your mare for foaling ahead of seeing all those signs. You can look at this playlist here, the mare series, if you would like to learn more. Once your mare has foaled, there are some important things you need to know about her physiology and her behavior, and I cover those in this next video here. If you like the practical, scientific aspect of breeding, raising, and keeping horses, then you're in the right place because that's pretty much all I talk about. So come along if you like and hit the subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one.